again, friends. I am so happy to see you all here with me. I want to thank you for joining me in my little trip to Disney. It was very exciting. But I think my cameraman may still be a bit miffed I didn't take them. I will make it up to them. At Disney, I met Rapunzel, and she was lovely and kind. It was very thrilling. So this week, in honor of her gentle soul, I will be reading Hansel and Gretel. Oh, I know I promised I would read her story, but I started to, and you know what? There was no mention of Eugene Fitzherbert. Well, as I was flipping pages looking for his name, I came across this story, and I thought, why not? So, without further ado, a poor woodcutter lived with his wife and two children on the edge of a very large forest. The boy was called Hansel. Hansel. And the girl, Gretel. The woodcutter did not have much food around the house, and when a great famine devastated the entire country, he could no longer provide enough for his family and daily meals. Oh, how very sad, poor man. One night, as he was lying in bed, thinking about his worries, he began tossing and turning. Then he sighed, and he said to his wife, What's to become of us? How can we feed our poor children? when we don't even have enough food for ourselves. I'll tell you what, answered his wife. Oh, that is not a good start. Nothing good ever follows, I'll tell you what. Early tomorrow morning, we'll take the children out into the forest where it is most dense. We'll build a fire and give them each a piece of bread. Then we'll go about our work and leave them alone. They won't find their way back home and will be rid of them. This is their mother! Not a stepmother or anything! Oh, there is a new leader for top bad parent in a fairy tale here. No wife, the man said, and well he should. At least one of their parents is decent. I won't do this. I don't have the heart to leave my children in the forest. The wild beasts would soon come and tear them apart. Maybe you could just eat the wild beasts. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, you fool, she said. Then all four of us will have to starve to death. You'd better start plating the boards for our coffins. Over dramatic much? She continued to harp on this until he finally agreed to what she suggested. But still. I feel sorry for the poor children, he said. Ooh, ooh, I have an idea. Ditch the wife and keep the kids. Still saves on food that way, and it also saves on narcissism and hot air. The two children had not been able to fall asleep that night either. Their hunger kept them awake, and when they heard what their stepmother said to their father, Oh, good, she's a stepmother. Oh, I mean, I, I didn't mean to say that stepmothers were... I, oh... <laughs> I'm going to get complaints from stepmothers. Gretel wept bitter tears and said to Hansel, Now it's all over for us. Be quiet, Han Gretel, Hansel said. Don't get upset. I'll soon find a way to help us. When their parents had fallen asleep, Hansel put on his little jacket, opened the bottom half of the door, and crept outside. The moon was shining very brightly, and the white pebbles glittered in front of the house like pure silver coins. That must have been so beautiful. Hansel stooped down to the ground and stuffed his pockets with as many pebbles as he could fit in. Then he went back to Gretel to say, Don't worry, my dear little sister. Just sleep in peace. God will not forsake us. And he lay down again in his bed. You know, they do say God helps those who helps themselves. Way to be proactive, Hansel. Hansel. At dawn, even before the sun began to rise, the woman came and woke the two children. Get up, you lazy bones! We're going into the forest to fetch some wood. Then she gave each one a piece of bread and said, Now you have something for your noonday meal, but don't eat it before then, because you're not getting anything else. Isn't she just a little ray of bright sunshine in the morning? Did they have coffee back then? She clearly needs a cup of coffee. Gretel put the bread under her apron, because Hansel had the pebbles in his pocket. Then they all set out together towards the forest. 
After they had walked a while, Hansel stopped and looked back at the house. He did this time and again until his father said, Hansel, what are you looking at? Why are you dawdling? Pay attention and don't forget how to use your legs. Waiter, coffee for two, really big cups. Oh, father, said Hansel, I'm looking at my little white cat that's sitting up on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. You fool, the mother said. I thought she was a stepmother. Is she a mother or a stepmother? That's not a cat. It's the morning sun shining on the chimney. You know what, waiter, maybe just leave the whole pot. But Hansel had not been looking at the cat. Instead, he had been taking the shiny pebbles from his pocket and constantly dropping them on the ground. When they reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Children, I want you to gather some wood. I'm going to make a fire so you won't get cold. Huh, nice of him. They may starve or be eaten by talking bears, but at least they won't be cold. Hansel and Gretel gathered together some of the brushwood and built quite a nice little pile. The brushwood was soon kindled, and when the fire was ablaze, the woman said, Woman now? Not mother or stepmother, just woman? What do the Grimm brothers have against parents? The woman said, Now, children, lie down by the fire and rest yourselves. We're going into the forest to chop wood. When we're finished, we'll come back and get you. Uh-huh, I believe that. Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire, and when noon came, they ate their pieces of bread. Since they heard the sounds of the axe, they thought their father was nearby. But it was not the axe. Rather, it was a branch that he had tied to a dead tree, and the wind was banging it back and forth. Ooh, clever. Mean, but clever. After they had been sitting there for a long time, they became so weary that their eyes closed, and they fell sound asleep. By the time they finally awoke, it was already pitch black, and Gretel began to cry and said, How are we going to get out of the forest? But Hansel comforted her by saying, Just wait a while until the moon had risen, then we'll find the way. And when the full moon had risen, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles that glittered like newly minted silver coins and showed them the way. They walked the whole night long and arrived back at their father's house at break of day. Kid takes after his dad. Let's hope he has better taste in women. They knocked at the door, and when the woman opened it and saw it was Hansel and Gretel, she said, You wicked children! Why did you sleep so long in the forest? We thought you'd never come back. Huh. There's, there's gaslighting in fairy tales? Really? I, I didn't think gaslighting was invented until, you know, well, gaslights. But the father was delighted because he had been deeply troubled by the way he had abandoned them in the forest. Not long after that, the entire country was once again ravaged by famine. I think it's time to move. You agree? All right, yeah, absolutely. Rosie and I would move. One night, the children heard their mother. Can we all agree on what they were going to call her? I mean, how about manipulative b <clears throat> person? Nah, that doesn't have a ring to it. You know, there must be a word out there that perfectly describes the kind of self-entitled, manipulative, narcissistic that this woman is. Maybe some kind of name? Oh, well, it'll come to me sometime. I wonder if she has an asymmetrical haircut. Everything's been eaten up again. We only have half a loaf of bread. But after that's gone, that will be the end of our food. This time, we'll take them even further into the forest so they won't be able to find their way back home again. Otherwise, there's no hope for us. Woman, you live next to a forest! There's all sorts of food in a forest. Did you not prepare for this after the last famine? Plant some carrots? Get a chicken? Something? Anything? No? Uh. All this saddened the father, and he said, It'd be much better to share your last bite to eat with your children. But the woman would not listen. Well, of course not. Gaslighter's got a gaslight. So she nags him into agreeing. Hansel waits until they are asleep comforts Gretel, then goes out into the moonlight. But no rocks this time. Dun, dun, dun. 
garden. Early the next morning, the woman came and got the children out of bed. They each received little pieces of bread, but they were smaller than the last time. On the way into the forest, Hansel crumbled the bread in his pocket and stopped as often as he could to throw the crumbs on the ground. Hansel, why are you always stopping and looking around? asked his father. I'm looking at my little pigeon that's sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me, Hansel answered. Fool, said the gaslighting but <clears throat> woman. That's not your little pigeon. It's the morning sun shining on the chimney. By li but little by little, Hansel managed to scatter all the breadcrumbs out onto the path. The woman led the children even deeper into the forest until they came to a spot they had never seen in their lives before. Once again, a large fire was made because clearly we don't want the dear children to freeze to death. And the woman said, just keep sitting here. If you get tired, you can sleep a little. We're going into the forest to chop wood. And in the evening, when we're done, we'll come here and get you. When noon came, Gretel shared her bread with Hansel, who had scattered his along the way. Then they fell asleep, and evening passed. But no one came for the poor children. Only when it was pitch black did they finally wake up, and Hansel comforted his little sister by saying, Just wait until the moon has risen, Gretel. Then we'll see the little breadcrumbs that I scattered. They'll show us the way back home. When the moon rose, they set out, but they could not find the breadcrumbs because the many thousands of birds had devoured them. Oh, the birds? Maybe they are near the Cinderella's Hitchcockian tree of dead mother. They can get help there. Don't worry, we'll find the way, Hansel said to Gretel. But they could not find it. So they wandered the forest, and we skip ahead. They followed a bird until it came to a little house that was made of bread. Moreover, it had cake for roof and pure sugar for windows and probably so many ants and rats and mold. Really, that is a terrible choice for architecture. Who thought of that? What a blessed meal, said Hansel. Let's have a taste. Whoa, hold on there, kid. I think the three second rule has long since passed. I want to eat a piece of the roof, Gretel. You can have some of the window since it's sweet. Weird thing to say. Hansel reached up high and broke off a piece of the roof to see how it tasted, and Gretel leaned against the window panes and nibbled on them. Then they heard a shrill voice cry out from inside, Nibble, nibble, I hear a mouse. Who's that nibbling at my house? And the children answered, The wind, the wind, it's very mild, blowing like the heavenly child. <laughs> sure, I believe them. I'd roll my eyes if I could. That's like saying, is anybody there? And someone answers, no, there's nobody here. Da, 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 da. Never mind. <sighs> and they did not bother to stop eating or let themselves be distracted. Seriously. Since the roof tasted so good, Hansel ripped off a large piece and pulled it down, while Gretel pushed out a round piece of the window pane, sat down, and ate it with great relish. Way to throw caution to the wind, children. Suddenly the door opened, and a very old woman, leaning on a crutch, came slinking out of the house. Slinking? Never a good description, slinking. Hansel and Gretel were so tremendously frightened that they dropped what they had in their hands. But the old woman wagged her head and said, Well now, dear children, who brought you here? Just come inside and stay with me. Nobody's going to harm you, said the woman who slinked. She took them both by the hand and led them into her house. Then she served them a good meal of milk and pancakes with sugar and apples and nuts. Great, now I'm hungry. Afterward, she made up two little beds with white sheets, whereupon Hansel and Gretel lay down in them and thought they were in heaven. The old woman, however, had only pretended to be friendly. She was really a wicked witch on the lookout for children and had built the house made of bread only to lure them to her. As soon as she had any children in her power, she would kill, cook, and eat them. Wow, just, just lay it out right there. We really thought children were made of sterner stuff in ye olden days. Now. Witches have red eyes and cannot see very far, but they have a keen sense of smell. 
like animals and can detect when human beings are near them. This all feels very witchist. I would like to state that the views of the Grimm brothers do not necessarily reflect the views of your furry blue friend. Therefore, when Hansel and Gretel had come into her vicinity, she laughed wickedly <laughs> and scoffed. They're mine. They'll never get away from me. Early the next morning, before the children were awake, she got up and looked at the two of them sleeping so sweetly with full rosy cheeks. Then she muttered to herself, They'll certainly make for a tasty meal. She seized Hansel with her scrawny hands and carried him into a small pen where she locked him up behind a grilled door. No matter how much he screamed, it did not help. Then she went back to Gretel, shook her up until she woke up, and wow, heavy sleeper. I mean, Hansel was just screaming and Gretel's just like... <sighs> anyway, she yelled, get up, you lazy bones. Is the witch related to the one married to the woodcutter? I want you to fetch some water and cook your brother something nice. He's sitting outside in a pen. We've got to fatten him up. Then, when he's fat enough, I'm going to eat him. Spoilers. Gretel began to weep bitter tears, but they were all in vain. She had to do what the wicked witch demanded. So, the very best food was cooked for poor Hansel, while Gretel got nothing but crab shells. Where did they get the crabs in the middle of the forest? Are there forest crabs? I'm going to look. Let's see, Google Oceans. Crabs can be found in all oceans and in fresh water. Some crabs live on land, sometimes several miles from water. Huh. Species such as the fiddler crab live in burrows in the sand or mud, where they stay during the winter and high tides. Others live within their shells of oysters or mussels. Huh. I guess if the forest is right on an ocean, still. Every morning, the woman went slinking to the little pen. She called out, Hansel, stick out your finger so I can see how fat you are. Rude. However, Hansel stuck out a little bone, and since the old woman had poor eyesight, she thought the bone was Hansel's finger. She was puzzled that Hansel did not get any fatter, and when a month had gone by and Hansel still seemed to be thin, she was overcome by her impatience and decided not to wait any longer. Hey there, Gretel, she called out to the little girl. Get a move on and fetch some water. I don't care whether Hansel's fat or thin. He's going to be slaughtered tomorrow, and then I'll cook him. Yeah, that should motivate Gretel. Oh, how the poor little sister wailed as she was carrying the water, and how her tears streamed down her cheeks. Gretel had to hang up a kettle full of water and light the fire. First, we'll bake, the old woman said. I've already heated the oven and kneaded the dough. She pushed poor Gretel out to the oven, where the flames were leaping from the fire. Crawl inside, said the witch, and see if it's properly heated, so we can slide the bread in. I wonder if this has ever actually worked for anyone. Has any child been so stupid as to say, sure, I'll climb into a hot oven, seems like a legit plan, nothing suspicious about it at all. But Gretel sensed what the witch had in mind, and she said, I don't know how to do it. How do I get in? You stupid goose, the old woman said. The opening is large enough. Watch, even I can get in. Wow. Just seriously, wow. She waddled up to the oven and stuck her head through the oven door. Then Gretel gave her a push that sent her flying inside and shut the iron door and bolted it. Phew! The witch began to howl dreadfully, but Gretel ran away and the witch was miserably burned to death. You know, I knew this part was coming and yet, you. Meanwhile, Gretel ran straight to Hansel opened the pen and cried out, Hansel, we're saved. The old witch is dead. Hail, Dorothy, the wicked witch is dead. Oh, sorry, wrong book. Then Hansel jumped out of the pen like a bird that hops out of a cage when the door is opened. 
My, how happy they were. They hugged each other, danced around, and kissed. Since they no longer had anything to fear, they went into the witch's house, and there they found chests filled with pearls and jewels all over the place. Probably brought in by the crabs. They're certainly much better than pebbles, said Hansel, so we can get out of the witch's forest. Wait, how do you, how would you use the pearls to, will they just magically, I take it back, Hansel's not all that clever. When they had walked for a few hours, hopefully not leaving pearls behind them, they reached a large river. Wait, it's, it's not over? I thought the story was Dead Witch, Happy Kids, The End. Huh. We can't get across, said Hansel. I don't see a bridge or any way over it. There are no boats either, Gretel responded. But there's a white duck swimming over there. It's bound to help us across if I ask it. Is this a power she's always had? We, did, did we know she could do this? Then she cried out, help us, help us, little duck. It's Hansel and Gretel, and we're really stuck. We can't get over, try as we may. Please take us across right away. The little duck came swimming up to them, and Hansel got on top of its back and told his sister to sit down beside him. How big is this duck? No, Gretel answered. That will be too heavy for the little duck. Let it carry us across one at a time. What is the average size of a duck? Uh, let's see, about 10 pounds. And how large is a, uh, well, I'm guessing, 10-year-old child? Huh, 40 to 90 pounds. That is one dead duck. The kind little duck did just that. And when they were safely across and had walked on for some time, the forest became more and more familiar to them. And finally, they caught sight of their father's house from afar. They began to run at once and soon rushed into the house and threw themselves around their father's neck. The man had not had a single happy hour since he had abandoned his children in the forest. And in the meantime, his wife had died. Convenient. Maybe she had a accident. Gretel opened and shook out her apron so that the pearls and jewels bounced about the room. And Hansel added this by throwing one handful after another from his pockets. Now all their troubles were over, and they lived together in utmost joy. Wow, that's the... Wait, there's one more part. My tail is done. See the mouse run. Catch it, whoever can. And when you can make... And when you can, make a great big cap out of its fur? What the... My tail is done. See the mouse run and catch it. The Grim Brothers were very weird. Could you just have said the end? Well, good night, kids. I hope you like your mouse caps. I'm not I'm not sure how to feel about this story. I I know so many of the elements are very famous, but it's it's not a very good story, is it? The villain isn't really scary. She gets burned to death in about three paragraphs. We spend more time with the gaslighter than with the witch. And then the gaslighter just dies. No explanation, just, hey, kids, that <clears throat> that gaslighter is dead. So now we can be happy. Great, Dad, because we murdered an old woman and took her jewelry. Then we wrote a duck home. I feel like this could be a much better story. Well, anyhow, I would like to thank you very much and to ask you to like share and subscribe we now have 44 whole subscribers at this rate by the end of the year we should have 45 whole subscribers i'm very excited also please leave comments not only do they help my tiny channel grow they also help me get better i know now that i should have our editor leave the subtitles up a little longer for slower readers i was very surprised that we have subtitles Nobody told me. Probably a good thing, though. You know, I can't really hear without my subtitles. Until next time, when we will maybe, probably, possibly, I hope, read Rapunzel.